breaking the news that's already broken. It's time for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. The new iPhone has a feature that automatically blurs nudity in text messages. It does have one annoying bug. It blurs pictures of Owen Wilson's nose. A New Jersey couple found 99 bottles of rum hidden in the drywall of their home. Ever since finding the 99 bottles, they've been taking one down and passing it around. Patrick Mahomes restructured his contract with the Chiefs. The team now hopes to do the same with Andy Reid's breakfast tab. Prospector ruins everything, even the news. Tune in tomorrow for Prospector's Briefs on Rock 107. On the phones, good morning. I'm Rock 107's Prospector. Got an uh, email from a woman named Melissa who manages a clothing store, a place that sells suits. You know what I'm talking about. And uh, she wants me to prank call one of her workers, Maribel. So I came up with an idea that the suit store needs another level, another little something else to sell to make it a hugely successful store. It's time for another Prospector prank call on Rock 107. House. This is Maribel. How can I help you? Hi, Maribel. Uh, my name's uh, Rick. Are you the manager? No, I'm not, but um, I, I'm one of the reps here. Uh, okay. Is your manager in? Um, She is, but I believe she's in a meeting right now. Hmm. I'd really love to talk to your manager. Could you uh, just pass this on to her, maybe uh, have her get back to me? Sure. Okay. I was in there last week, and I was getting fitted for a suit. Okay. And uh, probably after, you know, shopping, getting fitted, the whole thing, I, I was probably there, I'd say, for like an hour and a half. Okay. And I was starving by the time I got out of there. I had to wait. What if you guys uh, brought in catering, or even better, set up like a buffet over on the side? Uh-oh. So people, you know, could grab something to eat and then shop for suits, and, and you could call it, uh, are you ready for this? Okay. Suit, right? Suit. Suit plantation. Suit plantation. That's a good idea, but I don't think it would suit our store. Well, why is that? Um, because we're a clothing store, and if something happens to the clothing, we will be responsible for it. Yeah, but it. you don't put the food on the clothing. You keep them separated, right? So you have an area. It's kind of like uh, you go into like Barnes & Noble or something like that. You know, you know how you get to stand and look at books longer? You give them coffee. Okay. Same concept. How do you get people to stay and shop longer for more and get more suits? Give them lunch. Suit plantation. It's yeah, genius, what really. what happens if they spill something on the clothing, then we won't have Well, I mean, any- look. First of all, we know there's a crazy markup on the stuff, so you're not going to be losing that much. And second, they're not going to do that because it's a suit, and they're not going to spill anything. All right? Trust mm, me on that. I don't know. Some people are well, very yeah, careless yeah. with stuff. Can, you can at least admit this is a little genius in this idea. Think about it. Soup plantation. Think all the people would come just to get like a soup and a sandwich and then be like, hmm, I need a new suit. It's, it's perfect. I mean, it is a good idea, but unfortunately, I don't think my manager will buy that idea and yeah, consider it. Well, are you even writing this idea down? Yes, I am. Uh, okay, okay. What did I say? So you think that we should have a little soup plantation within the business while member of, while our customers are trying See, on soup? I, I don't hear the passion from you when you're describing it. She's not going to like it if you describe it like that. Let me hear you describe it like you... Uh, that's the way it sounds. Describe it like you believe in it. Like, we're going to do this. You know, that, that tabletop with the ties. Clear half of that out. I'll bring in, like, uh, some tomato soup and some cheeses and meats. I'll make some little sandwiches. We'll see how it goes, all right? We can partner on this. Um, it's genius. No. Mm, yes. No. No, because yes. had, then we're losing merchandise Mar- to Mar- show. Mar- to Mar- you're, you're not to losing show. merchandise in yeah. there because people are going to be like, yes, oh, man, yes. this is delicious uh, tomato soup. Maybe I'll if take a... we take clothes off the displays... Uh, and look, you don't get it. You, just, gonna... you, you don't get it. Yes, I do. Why are you being so stubborn? Why why are you being so stubborn? We just started working together on this, and now you're already being stubborn? My manager won't accept it. Well, you don't know that. I mean, your manager's not going to accept it if you don't get passionate about our idea. we got a big idea here. You and me, we're going to the top, kid. Either way, we're not allowed to have food or drinks in our store. Yeah, but rules are meant to be broken. Don't you want to be a millionaire with me? We're, We're doing it, okay? I'm sorry, we can't do that. We can do it, you and me. No, and I will, I mean, I'll forward the idea to my manager, but I don't Soup think plantation. she can will you, take into can consideration. Can you just do me one one favor? Can you just say, soup plantation, mmm, that's good suit? Mmm, soup plantation, that's good soup. <laughs> Maribel. Yes? <laughs> It's a it's Prospector. You're on Rock 107 right now. It's a oh it's a Prospector God. prank call. It's not real. That was some <laughs> idea. Your your manager Melissa told She's us to call you. Gonna get it. I'm gonna get one back at her. Come on, how's that slogan go again? Mm, that's good. What? Mm, that's good soup. Yeah. <laughs>
Life's pretty tough right now. There's plenty of bad news, but it's not all bad. It's time for the brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. You've probably heard plenty of cats stuck in a tree stories, but firefighters in Canada had to rescue a dog from a roof the other day. The dog's name is Lucky, and he squeezed through an open window on the top floor and could not get back inside. They raised up a ladder with a basket attached to it. Lucky jumped right in. Thanks. We needed that. The brighter side of Prospector on Rock 107. Were you ever just not ready for something? Good morning. I'm Rock 107's Prospector. And yesterday, I was wholly unprepared for something, and I ended up feeling like an idiot. A yam bag, if you will. I had to go to Geisinger for some medical tests. Nothing too serious, but not a walk in the park. But I head up to Jumper Road, turn on East Mountain Boulevard, and then I pull into the west parking lot there, and I realize I didn't know where I was heading. I mean, it's a big place. It's not huge, but it's spread out and all. So I pull in the valley area, and I ask the valet guy, I say, hey, look, I'm here for a breathing test. Am I anywhere near the right area? And he said, yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, okay, great. That's when I thought, well, I might as well let him park the car. His name was Ken. He came over with the ticket. He grabbed the keys, and then he mentioned, hey, Prospector, love the show, man. Cool. I like hearing when somebody listens to the show. That's nice. Ken takes the car. I go in for the breathing test, which turned out to be far more difficult than I thought it would be. I mean, I was struggling after that for more time than I care to admit. But, hey, that's why I was that guy singer in the first place getting a PFT, right? So they could figure out why I was having trouble breathing. As I walk back to the car, I realize I have no cash on my person. None. Not a fiver, not a one, nothing. What am I going to give this guy when I get to the stand and he goes to grab the car? So I hand Ken the ticket and I say, dude, I'm an idiot. I don't have any cash. And now I'm thinking I got to run to the bank, hit the ATM, hope someone's not there doing free transactions like the last time, and then get this guy some cash. Ken's like, look, it's okay. But he also starts picking on me about it. Give me the business about stiffing him. Oh, you don't have any change in the car? Oh, oh, oh way to go, prospector, you skin flint. <laughs> Well, again, I was unprepared and didn't think about the valet or using it to the last second. So it's on me. I said, hold on, let me see, Ken. And he's like, no, no, the damage is done. He starts laughing. But I'm there frantically searching my car for loose change, hoping he appreciates pocket lint as a form of gratitude. I'm there. I'm searching, hoping to unearth some hidden treasure. Ken, the valet guy's watching me like I'm auditioning for a new reality show called Broken Desperate. And all I'm thinking is there goes the chance of this guy ever listening to the show again. But finally... I hand him a few coins and I'm like, consider this a down payment on what I owe you. Lesson learned. Always carry cash. Stash them in your car. Just in case, especially at hospitals or anywhere else where you might run into a valet. You never know when you'll need to tip that valet or bribe a vending machine for maybe a much needed chocolate bar. Otherwise, you'll end up a yam bag like I did. It's like a fur farm prison break. Good morning, I'm Rock 107's Prospector, and I know this happened near Sunbury, a little out of the Rock 107 over-the-air reach, but it's all over WNEP and the news, and quite frankly, I'm a little sick of it. Originally, authorities thought thousands of minks were released when someone cut the fence at a mink farm, but now they say it's probably a few hundred. Either way, there are now a plethora of minks out there, ready to turn the fashion industry into a real-life game of whack-a-mink. And if you see one, look, don't try and be a hero. Those minks have been in captivity, and they're probably craving some payback. But it did inspire something you didn't ask for, something you probably don't want, but you're going to get it anyway. It's time for another Prospector poorly sung parody, this time to the tune of Sweets, Fox on the Run. It's Minks on the Run. Ah! Don't want to know their names, because they all look the same. Not at all like a squirrel. a cute face but they'll fight you right in that place and then you're gonna be sore minks on the run you scream as the minks get run over by a car the minks are running from the farm minks are 
terrible at singing. It's not going to stop me. What's a yam bag? A fool, an idiot, a blockhead, a dunce, you know, a dullard, simpleton, or a clod, nitwit, dipstick, pea brain, mouth breather, or numbskull. It's now time to announce the winner of Prospector's Yam Bag of the Day, as decided by you at rock107.com. Here are the nominees. Nominee number one. A 41-year-old man from Oklahoma named Melvin M.D., Tried to fake his own death last month by having his son tell cops he drowned while they were kayaking on the Mississippi River in Louisiana. At the time, cops were very suspicious because he was due in court later that day on a case that involved some serious rape charges. Then they discovered that Melvin had been ordered to wear an ankle monitor as a condition of his bail. And that placed him at a Walmart earlier in the day where he bought two prepaid phones. At some point, he apparently cut the ankle monitor off, but it's unclear when that happened and what he did with it. However, the cops were able to track him through those phones, which he used periodically for a while and then dumped. Cops were privately treating this as a fugitive case and not a drowning until they finally found him in Georgia on Sunday. The cops there caught him after pulling over a motorcycle without a license plate. He tried to flee, but crashed. He also gave a face name, but his fingerprints revealed his true identity. Melvin will now be facing additional charges, and his son is also expected to be charged in the scheme. Nominee number two. Losing something pricey like an Apple Watch is not good, and you might just be willing to do crazy things to find it, but there's a line you simply shouldn't cross. A woman in Michigan was in an outhouse on Tuesday morning when she dropped her Apple Watch into the toilet. Now that's terrible, but what comes next is just insanity. The woman decided to retrieve the watch by lowering herself into the toilet. It was big enough that she fit down inside, but then she got stuck. She yelled for help and someone called the cops, First responders showed up and found her, quote, in the muck, end quote. They removed the toilet top itself, then used a strap to hoist her out of safety. For better or for worse, she did manage to retrieve that disgusting watch. Afterward, police issued a public reminder saying if you lose an item in an outhouse, do not attempt to venture inside the containment area. Serious injury may occur. In this case, though, the woman was not her. And the winner is... The guy who tried to fake his own drowning, but was wearing an ankle monitor. You are the Yam Bag of the Day, and we'll move on to Friday's Yam Bag of the Week competition. Keep it here for all the nominees for Prospector's Yam Bag of the Week, Friday morning on Rock 107. Thanks for listening to Prospector's Prime Cuts podcast. Be sure to catch us live weekdays from 5.30 to 10 a.m. on Rock 107 or online at rock107.com or the Rock 107 app. A free download for your Android or iPhone. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss Prospector's Prime Cuts.